Hey, welcome back into today's video. It's the Rep Reports, the news that matters to you. We're going to be talking about James Charles, uh, a little bit about Destry Smith, and a couple more things that you're going to want to you're gonna hang around for. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitch channel. We're fixing to do an eating stream over there. Not today, but very soon. And uh, today I'm gonna be streaming some Among Us. So, get, batten down the hatches and buckle your seatbelts and uh, let's get into today's video. Don't forget we are doing a fundraiser for Rain this year to help out survivors of these types of situations. We're currently almost at $2,000, almost 20% of our goal of $10,000. I'm really proud of this. I'm really proud of everybody in the community that supported this. Uh, let's, let's meet the goal. All you have to do is your account is already connected. Uh, just uh, click a dollar, press continue, and you're good to go. Over on the Repzilla Twitter, follow it. It's been brought to my attention that Destry Smith is active again on uh, his Snapchat, and he's also created another uh, social media. We're going to get into that. We just want to take a second, and we want to check this out, and we want to say we just stay away from that. One Twitter user says, why the F does he look like Velma Dinkley? This is a very, very good point. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with who Destry Smith is, he's an OG YouTuber from back in... Oh, wait. He's an OG YouTuber from back in the day that we've been covering extensively on the Repzilla channel. We did uh, an interview with some of his former friends from back in the day, and uh, he has accusations of grooming and other inappropriate behaviors towards his young audience members from the last decade. A, a very not okay uh, situation. I'll put these videos in the pinned comment for you. One Twitter user says that Destry started uploading on an Instagram account that he planned to use as his rapper persona. Don't let him make content to hurt more people and uh, children with. That link is no longer available. Now, I don't know how accurate this information is. I have heard from multiple sources that he is uh, in the process of making some sort of rap song. Just to verify that I'm actually not blocked, let's let's pull up an incognito window. I am in fact blocked. <laughs> I am in fact blocked. So take that for what you will. But these are the two pictures on there. Somebody did send me a picture, uh, set, and this is a little bit of verification about that account because it is liked by the Cap and Des Des account. That gives me a little bit more. Uh, leverage towards this could be factual and it says haters will say I only got one outfit well this one outfit got more drip than all your s-word combined now it's very interesting to me and it's acknowledgement that Destry is watching what is happening and is very aware of the situation so I'm going to be interested in what kind of rap song that he comes out with and uh, uh, what what he attend tries to say in this so I just wanted to put this out here to let you guys know be careful dudes active out there I'm currently still working on the situation I still may have some very important and big interviews on the way on that we'll uh, see uh, make sure your subscribe notifications on also in the news a quick little transition piece to the news is a uh, Todd Smith of the blog of David Dobrik's blog squad actually did release a statement on this situation. He said that this is an apology to Hannah and her friends, an acknowledgement of my role in the trauma they went through that night and the pain they've carried every day since. I would like to own up to my mistakes and apologize to those that I've hurt for my insensitivity. I do not condone misconduct of any kind and I'm sorry for the disgusting comment I made in that video in any other videos I'm sorry to have been part of a toxic environment that got you into that situation I'm sorry I was so naive and did not challenge my own perception to know what was actually happening in that room although I never left the apartment until it was time to go I never purchased alcohol for anybody that night I did hop up to make a joke for the vlog I was trying to say something edgy and crude for a laugh but it was not funny and I'm ashamed of myself I am in full support of Hannah coming forward. I cannot imagine the way she feels, and I'm so sorry to have been involved, and I understand that my inaction was of equally awful consequence. 
I was in the apartment and contributed to that toxic environment that led to NSA. I know I need to continue to educate myself. I sincerely apologize to those I've hurt, including SA survivors. Now I know how my actions added to a culture that allowed this to happen, and I'm embarrassed that this is what it took for me to learn about the effects of my behavior, inaction, and ignorance. I fully plan on learning from my mistakes and educating myself through different resources on SA. If you're unfamiliar with the David Dobrik situation, we have been following it. I have several videos in, within detail that I will put also in the pinned comment. There was a most recent Insider article titled, David Dobrik lost close to everything after a Vlog Squad allegation. Here's how the backflash unfolded. I'm going to put this in the pinned comment. This is a very enlightening and very good article to get you guys up to date on the situation with David. Um, also in the news. As you guys might have heard, there's another James Charles talking to a minor accusation. And this one comes from TikTok. We're going to go over that. As you can see, this uh, it says from James, what the F is your problem? Posting screenshots of my snaps to, uh, to you on your private story. I strongly recommend you keep my name out of your mouth or we're going to have major issues. I'd love to remind you that you are the one who called me cute and said you were by and into me. The situation seems to unfold in conversation just like all the other uh, accusations against Charles. One thing I do got to point out, James says, the messages of you admitting you lied about your age. You saved them and they're gone. The uh, accuser says, I don't know, but I can promise you I didn't delete anything, lol, followed by them deleting something. I don't know what that means. There's always some very bizarre situations uh, when it comes to James Charles and these uh, underage fans that he seems to be going for. There's always something. But there is one thing to keep in mind is that this is a huge pattern of behavior. And the fact at all that he is in the DMs of these young uh, fans is a major issue. Keemstar hosts a popular YouTube channel drama alert post James Charles has been reported to the police post screenshots. The accuser says that they had to delete their video and sorry about it. Then says parents made me take it down because they apparently got contacted by the police. Everything in the video is 100% real. Another user saying I guess being a celebrity has its perks of silencing people. Nothing new but he got caught in 4k. I emoji. Not too long after that on the same day that James released his apology, uh, Keemstar says that there was another a kid that came forward with evidence. Says that three different people, all ages 16, reached out to Drama Alert in the last six hours with accusations that James Charles was private DMing them and their underage friends on Snapchat. I do want to know your thoughts on this situation, and there is something I want to talk about. I was suggested a video clip that was uh, sort of cut out of context, and this is that clip. Talk to guys that live in different states and stuff, and I'm like, hey, like, why don't you come visit? And like, well, I can't afford a plane ticket. Yep. And it's like, okay, well, I can. So yep. like, get nice. on the plane. And like, well, I just don't really feel comfortable with that. But like, I love you, and I really want to be together. And I'm like, well, we can't be together because you can't afford a plane ticket. You're probably still in either high school or college, like a senior in high school or in college. Right. So like, either you accept the flight and realize that like this is what I'm bringing to the relationship, so we can spend time together if you actually care about me. Yeah. Or we literally never meet because you can't afford it. That's People right away were saying, well, there's James Charles admitting that he uh, wants to be with high schoolers. And I have to admit that it's a very strange fumble of words given the context that we have in this situation. He, he says literally, you can't afford things because you're probably a high schooler, uh, a, a senior in high school or college. That age demographic is... It, within itself a uh, very young but apparently this is the full context of what he was talking about are you looking for love on a, on so, a long term yes. like longevity yes because i because i i hear these stories we talked about it and yeah. and like how is your love life it, oh, shit yeah <laughs> why? The, okay so the thing is for me i'm 21 but like i said i have the mentality of a 40 year old yeah so for me like i'm much more mentally and emotionally mature than a lot of people my age i'm not physically attracted to older guys which sucks like i would date like the absolute youngest, like 18, 19, that looks a little bit older or yep. like 24 that like has a young personality. Okay. So like I'm in like a tough situation where like I, it's really hard for me to find people already that like want to date, yeah. period. This is supposed to make this context of the first clip better, but I think honestly that it makes it worse. The reason I say that is because he starts off saying that he has the mentality of a 40 year old and therefore he wants to date younger uh, people. And we do have to keep in mind... Uh, 
James Charles is 21 years old, so this age range is quite normal for that age. But you do have to factor in uh, power dynamics and things like that. But that being said, um, the thing that sticks out to me is that he says he feels like he has an older mentality of like a 40-year-old. Now, here's my thing. Me, myself, I would not shoot for those ages. I like um, people with older mentalities themselves. People that have life experience, people that have been through things. Uh, I don't want to have to date somebody that I'm, I'm, I'm keeping having to uh, help with advices and teach things to that I've already been through. And while I don't uh, care to help and give advice, I don't actually want to be in a romantic relationship with somebody that's uh, that young. That being said, it throws me off when he says he has the mentality of a 40-year-old because I'm sure a 40-year-old or an older person, older mentality, wouldn't want a younger mentality. So just from listening to those two clips right there, it looks to me we see the issue of this, of all, all of this situation, and being that he is specifically attracted to younger men. Um, he's going for younger men, and you pair that with the fact that he's using his own fan base to search for these young men. I think that's why he's running into these types of situations. YouTuber Ready to Glare says, interesting that neither James Charles or those around him are addressing anything. Are, they're real fast when it comes to dropping people for much less, but actual serious accusations involving minors, silence. Journalist Kat Timbarge says, the alleged James Charles interactions with minors show a pattern of JC getting aggressive and claiming that minors lied about their ages once screenshots leaked. It's an increasingly worrisome use of his power dynamic. He shouldn't be privately messaging young fans at all. And I 100% agree with that. This is another really good article by Lindsaysor, Lindsaysor, who's Lindsay Dotson, also from Insider. I'm going to put that in the pinned comment. You're going to want to read that as well. When I was in the making of this episode, it looks like James Charles did come out with an uh, apology video or uh, an accountability episode video. And it's very interesting because, as you can see here, it's titled Holding Myself Accountable. It's got over 3 million views, and the like to dislike ratio is very odd in the way that I mean it's overwhelmingly positive. Now, it's interesting because this is being covered by everyone, by the mainstream media, and as you can see, it's being covered in a negative light, as you would expect from somebody that's admitting to sending inappropriate images to minors. Another thing is, is the majority of the comments are negative. This leads many people to believe that he or someone else is botting the likes to dislike ratio and if that's the case YouTube will be on top of this and you should see this uh, even out. Another thing could be his fan base is either very young or they don't care about the drama. They might be just interested in makeup and uh, that could be a factor. Another conspiracy theory about this situation is that YouTube could be on James Charles side manipulating the uh, likes to dislike ratio. Now, whether you believe in these types of theories or not, we can all agree that this is weird for somebody that's admitting a federal crime. Over on the channel Observe, it's a guy that reacts to, uh, he's a body language analyst, and he goes through James Charles's uh, accountability video and breaks it down. I'm gonna put that, as well as James Charles's video, in the pinned comment so you can check it out. One of the most interesting things about this situation is... We could see that he is in front of an infinite white background. This could be linked to wanting to appear as pure or something along those lines, but he's also wearing black. It looks like his makeup is not done, perhaps a little bit of gel in his eyebrows, but his hair is largely messy. It doesn't seem like he's here to try to flex any wealth or anything along those lines. That being said, I feel like I should note that at one point in his career, he has done a course on how to make apology videos. So needless to say, this should appear good nonetheless. That's right, you, you heard it. Um, he did a whole course on how to properly do apology videos. And you'll notice that his apology video in this specific uh, accountability titled theme, well, you couldn't get more perfect. It was in the episode of Instant Influencer, season one, episode three. Good morning, artists. Good morning. Good morning. We have to talk. So, last night, I got a chance to look back at the footage from last week's episode, and I saw what you guys did. 
You all look <laughs> really confused. You know what you did. I honestly feel like you all owe me an apology. And scene. Oh my God. Really got me, James. Well, this leaves me speechless, but I mean, it goes a long way to point out why his apology for this situation was flawless. Now, one thing that I, I tweeted about on the Ripsla Twitter, people gauge apologies from good to bad like it's the end all be all when in reality guilty people can have perfect apologies and innocent people can have terrible ones. Don't actually forget what they're apologizing for. The finger that points to the moon is not the moon. And in this case we have somebody that uh, is an ace in apologies. So let's not forget what he's apologizing for. Uh, sending inappropriate images and to underaged individuals minors as uh, young as 14 15 16 under the age of 18 um if you just keep that detail in the front then you can see uh what this really is that being said also in the news all right, I'm gonna take this next news spot to uh, promote my Twitch account that I'm fixing to go play right now. So we are currently at 1,600 followers, and I said that I was gonna do uh, cook a cooking stream when we hit 2K, and we're getting really close to it. And I'm also gonna do a bunch of random streams this week, and the one that I'm fixing to do right after this video is a random stream for this week. So the link to that is going to be in the pinned comment as well. But as interesting as this is, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. I wanna know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative or interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up, those likes, and as always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. Um, mm, the stuff with James Charles, I cannot believe there's yet again another accusation. It seems like there's another accusation about James Charles every single week. And that's where I'm at with it. I want to say thank you to my patrons. We're about to meet a huge goal over there. And if that's something that you're interested in being a part of to help support me here, you can uh, go to the pinned comment, click the link, check it out, see if that's something for you. And, uh, and don't forget this month we're coming out with awesome team jerseys. But I'm going to need uh, your sizes and your emails because the first couple orders are already sold out. They're really awesome. So if you do want those... Just let me know. The form will be also in the pinned comment. And uh, that's just another issue that you're repping if you're not repping Greg. And hey, do that. All you do is subscribe and notifications turn on. Be in the comment section to every single video. I'm going to be there. Greg the Cat is going to be there. And the rest of the Red Sox community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you. Oh, I forgot. Did I, did I do my outro right?